Sophia Sultan was the favorite and chief consort of Ottoman Sultan Murad III, and the queen mother of Sultan Mehmed III. It is evidenced by many historical sources, that she had a strong influence in Ottoman political affairs during the reigns of both sultans. She was also the grandmother of Sultan Ahmed I, and Sultan Mustafa I of the Ottoman Empire. Many sources describe Sophia Sultan as an intelligent, politically smart, and patient woman, who never hesitated to show her intelligence and ambitions. She was one of the most eminent, and powerful figures during the era, known as the Sultanate of Women. Today in this video, you'll get to know the 10 interesting facts about Sophia Sultan's life that you may not know about. Number 1, Sophia Sultan was born in 1550. The birth date of Sophia Sultan is just based on predictions, because like every woman in the harem, her early life is quite unclear. According to some historians, she was born somewhere in 1550, in Dukagchen Highlands, Albania. However, some claimed her as Bosnian. Some historians argued, that Sophia Sultan was also of Venetian descent, or might be a relative of Nurbanu Sultan. Whatever her origin was, it is clear that she came from a noble family, and had a strong courtier education and diplomatic sense. Number 2, she was presented as a slave to Murad III at the age of 13. She had been abducted by corsairs in her youth and sold to the Ottoman harem. There is not any specific information available about her training time period and education for the life at harem. Historians believe that her early name was Sophia, but in harem, she was named Sophia, which means the pure one, or the innocent beauty, probably because of her golden hair and fair skin. In 1563, at the age of 13, she was presented as a concubine to Sultan Selim II's eldest son and heir apparent, Murad, the future Sultan Murad III, by his cousin Aisha Sultan, who was the granddaughter of Sultan Suleiman and Harem Sultan, through their only daughter, Myrima Sultan. But it is said that, for other political purposes, Myrima Sultan might have trained her for her nephew. Number 3, she was the only concubine of Murad III before his accession. For her beauty and intelligence, Sophia Sultan became the most favorite consort of Sultan Murad. Though he was not officially married to Sophia, but still, she was considered as the wife of Sultan Murad. In the year Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent died, she gave birth to Murad's first son, Mehmed, the future Mehmed III on 26 May 1566. She was the only concubine of Murad before his accession, and for several years, she remained the one woman for him. This caused Sultan Murad for having only one surviving heir till 1581. Sophia Sultan had some power and freedom in the harem as she was the mother of Murad's first and oldest son, but her position was not that much secure because she had no other surviving son. Nurbanu Sultan, the mother of Sultan Murad, was worried about the influence of Sophia Sultan over her son and the Ottoman dynasty. She advised him to take other concubines for the betterment of the dynasty, and sent concubines to Sultan Murad for taking control over him. She also blamed Sophia Sultan for using witchcraft for taking Murad in her control, and to stop him from taking new concubines. 
In this situation, Sophia Sultan acted very patiently and politically, and accepted the other concubines of Murad without expressing her jealousy. Because of this all situation between Urbanu and Sophia Sultan, it is said that, at the time Sultan Murad died, he had 22 or 25 sons out of his more than 50 children from different other women. After the death of Nurbanu Sultan, Sophia Sultan was resumed to being the only companion of Sultan Murad in his later years. Number 4, as Queen Mother, she became more active in internal and foreign affairs. After the death of Murad III in 1595, Sophia Sultan managed to succeed his son Mehmed III in ascending the throne as the Sultan of the Empire, and thus, she became the mother of the Sultan, which was the most powerful position a woman could have in the whole Ottoman Empire. Ruling the harem was not enough for Sophia Sultan. She started to interfere in the internal and foreign affairs of the Empire. She gained more and more power with the support of Ghazan Faraga the chief of the white eunuchs and the head of the inner imperial palace, which made some grand viziers very uncomfortable. She had to handle serious internal struggles, and struggles with the army instead of her son. But to support her son in the war expenses, she also had given money from her personal account. She used to establish diplomatic relations with foreign kings and queens, and correspond to the European rulers directly. Just as her mother-in-law now Banu Sultan, she continued to support the pro-Venetian policy and foreign affairs. She had very good relations with the Venetian ambassadors. One of the Venetian ambassadors described her as a woman of her word and used to send gifts and gold. Sophia Sultan also maintained good relations with England. She personally corresponded to Queen Elizabeth I of England, and both women also used to exchange different gifts. In a letter from 1599, Sophia Sultan responds to the request of Elizabeth for good relations between the empires. She also received a golden beautiful carriage from Queen Elizabeth I and she used to go around the city in it, which was very unusual at that time. This relationship continued during the time, when Sophia was the mother of the Sultan. Number 5 she lived through the reign of seven Ottoman sultans. She lived through the reign of seven Ottoman sultans, Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent, Sultan Salem II, her husband Murad III, her son Mehmed III, her grandsons Ahmed I, and Mustafa I. And even she had also seen the reign of her great-grandson, Osman II, under whose reign she died. Number 6, she was the most influential in terms of appointments, and dismissals. As a queen mother, she was the most influential and active in terms of the appointments and dismissal of everyone in the empire. Even she could change and appoint the positions from the Grand Vizier to Sheikh ul Islam. During the nine years reign of her son, she has been even accused of corruption in his government which included selling the important and beneficial positions at the highest price offered. Number 7, Sophia Sultan was blamed to support the execution of her oldest grandson, Prince Mahmud. In 1603, after an argument between her son and oldest grandson Prince Mahmud, Sophia Sultan supported the execution of her grandson. This execution became the drastic tragedy of the downfall in her life. According to a source, her son Mehmed III died in the same year after the execution, with the distress caused by the death of his son. And this was the end of her reign as the Queen Mother of the Sultan, because she had lost her title and position in the court. In 1603, Mehmed III was succeeded by his son Ahmed I. During the reign of her grandson, she was exiled to the old palace and not allowed to return to the main court except for short visits. But she continued to receive her allowances. 
Number 8. She was one of the wealthiest women in the Ottoman history. Sophia Sultan arranged the highest allowance ever for herself as the mother of Sultan. During the latter part of her son's reign, she enjoyed an enormous stipend of 3,000 aspers a day. In 1596, when her son Mehmed III went on a campaign in Hungary, he gave great power over the empire to his mother, and also made her in charge of the treasury. As she intervened not only in domestic but also in foreign affairs, ambassadors of the different countries knew of her fondness for gold and precious gifts, and because of this too, she soon became the richest woman in the empire. Number 9, Sophia Sultan was also known for her charitable works. Sophia Sultan was also famous for her generosity and charity works. She had made a lot of monuments during her life. She is best known for starting the construction of the new mosque in Old City, in Istanbul. Though the construction of this mosque was started in 1597, but it had left unfinished because, Sophia Sultan lost her power and position as Queen Mother after the death of her son. She was then permanently exiled to the old palace. Her life wasn't loyal enough that she could see the mosque completed. The construction of the mosque was halted for decades. It was completed in 1665, by the order of another Queen Mother, Turan Sultan, who was the mother of Mehmed IV. In 1610, to honor Sophia Sultan, the Al Malika Sophia Mosque was constructed in Cairo after her name. The construction of that mosque started under the control of her servant Osman Aga, who held the post of the Aga Dar al Sada, or black eunuch in charge of the harem. Sophia Sultan had a mosque and a fountain built in a village of Uskuda. She established a foundation in order to read the Quran in the tomb of her husband. For a descendant from Ghazali, she had built a mausoleum in Ashk Pasha town of Fati. Moreover, she donated money to the army for the expenses during the wars. She also used to pay the debts of those who couldn't return the debts by themselves. Number 10, she was died in 1621. Sophia Sultan was died somewhere in 1621 at the age of 70 or 71, during the reign of her great-grandson Osman II. The exact cause of her death is not known. Many historians say that she passed away due to natural causes, but some others argued that it might be a heart attack or brain hemorrhage. She was buried in her husband Murad III's tomb, which is located in the garden of the Hagia Sophia Mosque, Istanbul. Sophia Sultan had a strong desire to govern, and her history showed that a young and inexperienced concubine, grew as a wise woman, who was able to achieve the things that other slaves could only see in the dreams. 